This video is sponsored by PCBWay. When I was ordering parts for the previous batch of RC Snowcat kits last year, I overestimated the amount of people who would want to buy the tracks alone, but no vehicle kit. So now I have about 45 tracks left that I need to get rid of. To sell them, I designed a new Snowcat kit that is simpler and has less parts. The chassis is based on a plank of wood that you have to cut yourself, instead of vacuum formed polycarbonate, and instead of wheels in the middle of the tracks, it just uses skids to keep things simpler. I built up this new kit and took it up to the snow. Sick. There will be more info about this kit at the end of the video, so stay tuned if you're interested. The snowcat worked fine, but the problem is that you're probably tired of watching my RC snowcats drive around in the snow, and frankly, so am I. So I wanted to try something a little different. Recently I've been having a lot of fun exploring the bottom of the lake with the Feefish underwater drone, and one thing that amazed me was how flat and desolate it is down there. Basically just a giant field of mud perfect for driving on. So I thought to myself, why don't I take the new snowcat design and convert it into a submarine? Pretty good idea, huh? The only big drawback is that since radio waves can't go through the water very well, it will need to be tethered. But oh well, still seems like a fun project. So let's get building. I started by adding a little extra waterproofing to this FPV camera by smearing some non-corrosive silicone on the PCBs. Next, I made the mistake of assuming a 3D printed enclosure would be waterproof as long as it is printed with solid infill. This was printed on my Snapmaker A350, which is currently my favorite FDM printer. To make the window seal better, I filed the mating surface flat. I then put the FPV camera in the housing. Here I was stripping back the enamel from some magnet wire so that it can be soldered. Magnet wire is very useful for submarines because it has a solid core and is insulated by a thin enamel coating, and water can't flow through it like it can with standard multi-strand electrical wire. Then I soldered the magnet wire to the FPV camera wires and heat shrinked the joints with silicone sealant under the heat shrink. I used hot glue to seal the inside of where the wires come into the housing to act as an epoxy dam when I pot it. This black fabric is to reduce the reflections of the camera seeing itself. Next I fired up the Stepcraft M1000 and cut a window out of 3mm acrylic. To form a proper seal, I siliconed around the housing and then screwed the window in place. The wire pass-through is waterproofed by potting this little wire trough in epoxy. After the epoxy cured, it was time for a quick test. This is where I realized that the 3D prints were not waterproof despite being solid plastic, or what I thought was solid plastic. Should have tested this before. I thought it had fully dried out, but it didn't, as I would discover later. And then I closed it back up, built a foam frame around the entire thing, and potted it in epoxy. After peeling away the foam and peering inside, there was condensation! Crap! I think the PETG itself had absorbed water, and then it would condense at cooler temperatures. When I heat this thing up or cool it down, condensation builds on the other side of the windshield. So I'm going to drill a hole right in here and then dry it out and then fill that hole in with something. Moving on to the motors. Luckily these motors have the magnet wire routed externally a few inches. I added some silicone and heat shrink to hold everything together. I also added some silicone to the motor mount plate itself and screwed that onto the back wall of the gearbox. Here's the pinion gear going on and I also added some marine grease around the bearing. This is the main axle bearing, and these are the gear bearings. To seal the phase wires, I added hot glue above and below them. I then 3D printed this enclosure and glued it onto the gearbox. I then added some silicone on top of the hot glue to seal the phase wires even more. Here's the shaft going in, and wiping off the grease. Then I put the two sides of the gearbox together and greased the gears. There's no way I was going to be able to keep water out of this huge gearbox enclosure. Plus, if I did, it would have added way too much buoyancy. This is the gearbox cover. I made some holes in it with a cloth filter to let water flow in and out, but keep sediment out. That then got screwed onto the gearbox. Since with the FPV camera housing, I learned that 3D printing alone was not waterproof, I smeared silicone all over the outside to seal it. I then cut more windows out of acrylic on the Stepcraft, did some silicone around the rim, and filled the entire thing up with mineral oil. Mineral oil is non-conductive, so it's fine to submerge electronics in it. My goal was to have the mineral oil take up all of the space inside, so there's no room left for water to ingress. In theory, if the entire thing is filled up with oil and there's no air, then the entire thing can't be pressurized, so there will not be anything pushing water in. I wasn't able to entirely fill it up, so there is a little air, but oh well. There are two motors, so I did the same thing to the other side as well. Upon the first test under power, the motors were able to spin just fine, so this should work. Next it was time for the ESCs. I pinched back the insulation and tinned the wire strands, so that the water would not seep back through the strands all the way to the PCB. Then I glued together a little foam trough and potted them in epoxy. After the epoxy cured, I soldered them directly to the motor phase wires, and then sealed the joints with silicone and heat shrink. 
Next, it was time to start reassembling the vehicle. The two gearboxes attached to this center brace and screwed on, and then the whole drivetrain assembly gets attached to the plank of wood. Here's soldering the ESC power wires with silicone under the heat shrink. This is the big tether wire I'm using. Power from the motor gets two strands, and the ESC PWM signal wires and the video signal gets one strand each. That got soldered onto all the right wires, and then I continued assembling the rest of the vehicle. These are the mid-track support skids going on here. All these 3D printed components are probably pretty buoyant, so to sink the whole vehicle I attached some chunks of steel to the bottom. Those got glued on and zip tied in place. Next I installed the injection molded tracks. Probably not a very optimal design for underwater use since they're kind of like big paddle wheels, but oh well. Here are all the electronics that are going on the other side of the tether. It's basically just the FPV transmitter, RC receiver, and battery. These will all float on this little foam trimaran boat left over from an old project. My tether is only 7 feet long, so this thing isn't going to be driving very deep, but I thought it would still be neat to attach a light. So I cut some PVC pipe, an acrylic circle on the step craft, and then glued the two together with a 3D printed end cap over that. Then a flashlight can be placed inside. The back end gets sealed by this mechanical test plug. And with that, the AquaCat was complete, so I took it to the beach. This was all a pretty quick and dirty build, but it's just a proof of concept anyways. I had no idea if an underwater rover would even work. The FPV camera housing was still full of condensation, but miraculously there was a clear circle right around the lens. I have no idea why this was happening, but it was quite convenient. Into the water! <laughs> I don't even know if it's gonna sink, honestly. Yeah, that's, that's ask, probably... I gotta pull my barge in. <laughs> Come on, barge, don't capsize! Yes! Oh, this is sick! Why? The video looks terrible, though. There's a ton of lines. It's like interference or... Oh yeah, look at that. It's interference from the ESCs. Right when I stop driving, it goes clear. Okay, this is pretty cool. But the, the issue now is I'll have no idea when I'm too deep, you know? We can look at the part and start sinking a bit. <laughs> yeah, if it starts to get pulled down. We got some duck friends coming to see us. I want to try and find that pole. I don't know which way you're facing. I have <laughs> no idea. I need a compass on the FPV. I need OSD. Honestly, I have no idea if I'm going further out or coming in closer to shore. This is kind of a problem. <laughs> oh, there's the pole. I see the pole now. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think it's as deep as we thought. Wow, look at that. You can see the, the uh, moss on it moving with the waves. <laughs> this is rad. See, there's the tether. I'm going to drive over it. What's up with that? This tether must be negatively buoyant. So it just sinks, yeah. you know? Yeah. I can see the flashlight from here. Oh, yeah. It's gonna look so cool emerging from the water. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's coming out of the waves. That's sick. Aqua Cat. Oh, that's epic. How's it feel? Feels great. And getting into the water is a bit a bit tricky, but now it's fine. Look at all these ducks. We have so many duck friends. They're just sleeping right next to us for some reason. They must think we have bread. Think I can touch one? No, let me touch you. I can see the submarine. You, you can't be that deep. Okay, I gotta sneak up on these ducks from the other side because they have their heads looking towards Sebastian. Oh, I touched it. Yay. Nice. Look at that. The mineral oil turns to white. There's so many bubbles in it. Yeah, jump it. Yeah. Yeah, I'm definitely not surprised that by having the uh, video signal wire routed along with the ESC signal wire, we get a lot of noise when it's driving. Yeah. That makes sense. Actually, I don't think it's the ESC signal wires that are giving noise. I think it's the, the power wires. Yeah, it's not that deep right there. Keep going forward and you'll see the next one. It's a clean install, straight into the sand. Got some seashells, pretty incredible. <laughs> oh, here's the next one. Oh, this one's skinnier on the bottom. There's some algae on the rocks. I should have put some capacitors. Oh, now the flashlight is really starting to work. Yeah, I should have put capacitors in there to, to remove some of that noise. Wow. 
That whole thing is just built on a few little sticks. That almost looks like wood, but I'm sure it's not. There's no way they built it on wood. Well, the motors haven't stopped running yet. That's amazing. Full speed. Oh, it was starting to wheelie. Look at all the sediment. 19 volts, this battery's dead. I would say that was a pretty successful first drive. Now we just gotta find a more interesting place to take it. I wanted to get some underwater shots of it driving around, so I came back to the same beach, but this time with the Feefish submarine to film it. What do this machined aluminum waterproof light enclosure and this high quality printed circuit board assembly have in common? They were both made by PCBWay, who is the sponsor of this video. PCBWay offers full feature custom PCB prototyping services. It's super easy to upload your Gerber files to their instant quote feature and then place your order. Turnaround times are crazy fast and can even be as short as 24 hours. You can get started for as little as $5. They can even do PCBA assembly so you don't even need to do any soldering yourself. Check out this PCB I had made by PCBWay. It's a prototype of the LumiBoost LED driver that I'm using in this underwater light. Not only does PCBWay make PCBs, but they also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and injection molding. In a future video, I'll be showing more of this underwater light that was made by PCBWay's CNC service, so stay tuned. This month, check out their big Christmas sale where you can get free prototypes for Christmas themed designs and up to 50% off PCBs and assembly orders. Thanks again to PCBWay for sponsoring this video. So today I'm at the place where I do a lot of ground effects vehicle testing and I know it's really shallow out here so I'm gonna go drive around through the muck. It's very muddy. Into the abyss. Ha <laughs> ha, that's so cool. I need to let the cavities fill up with water because it's kind of floating too much right now. Oh my god, and I can't see anything on the FPV camera because it is just so muddy down there. It's going really slowly, even at full throttle. Yeah, the bottom here is just like the finest silty muck. Look at that. It's not even able to drive through it. That's how fine this mud is. The tracks are, oh my god, it's sinking. <laughs> Oh, there's no sticks around here I can poke it with. Backing up does nothing. Going forward does nothing. Oh, I'm stuck. Well, shoot. I guess I gotta go get my muck boots. Oh, my God. It's just like jelly. Oh, and it smells bad. Okay, let's see if I can drive away from that. Go. Please. The ground is a bit more solid up here. Okay, continuing on. The GoPro is still above the water, which is really weird. It must just be super shallow. I don't like this area. This is too dangerous. <laughs> I really don't want to have to go out there and get it. Need to go deeper. The whole thing is like not even submerged. Even the FPV camera is above water. How it is so shallow through this whole area. I can't believe it. I'm getting pretty far out there now. I'm scared. So it's just kind of deep enough as to where the FPV camera is starting to be submerged. But you really cannot see much through this FPV camera. Just because the water visibility is very low here. Oh, there's a weed. And engulfed in mud. Ugh. Okay, I need to try and start bringing it back before I get lost. Now it's finally deep enough as to where the entire snowcat is submerged. I think the GoPro is submerged. It's hard to completely tell. Oh wow, there's weeds. Whoa. 
I feel like these tracks are also very susceptible to getting tangled in weeds because they have slits on the bottom of them. So I'm gonna turn so that I face shore, or at least try to. I can't really see anything. Uh-oh. This seems problematic. It's not really moving very much. Drive, drive, drive. Oh, there's so many weeds. I see lots of weeds. Backwards and forwards, come on. I think it's moving forwards, but just very slowly. There's just stuff flying through the water every which way. There's a duck. That's a, that was a, whoa, that's a beaver. Or a river otter or something. Too bad I'll never see that from the video feed because it's way too mucky. I'm still able to turn, that's for sure. It's just not going forward very well. I bet the tracks are just super tangled in weeds. The fact that there's even clear water in front of the FPV camera though, makes me think that it has to be moving forward. You know, because like, I would just be in a single cloud of muck if it weren't moving forward. It's definitely getting closer to me though. I think I'm making progress. It's also very hard to go straight. The only way I'm able to tell which direction it's facing is because of the flashlight. I can see it from here. The battery's getting pretty low. I hope I can make it back to shore before it dies. I think the GoPro is sticking up above water. I think I see it. We're coming out! Woo! Oh, I can't believe it. I thought for sure I was going to have to go get the kayak. And the light's above water. Nice. And the FPV camera's out of water even. We made it! Oh, I'm so happy. So are there weeds tangled everywhere? Um, no, not really. I don't see too many weeds. It's definitely not clean. <laughs> it smells bad. So today I'm gonna drive it here. The water should be more clear and there should be more interesting things to see. Oh, cool. You want to watch? Go for it. Look at that thing. No guarantees it's gonna work. Look at that. So here's where things went south. From the little FPV camera, it's really difficult to see slope angles. From the GoPro, it's a little easier to see that it kind of drops off right here. And I was also getting distracted by the people asking questions. So then it ended up going down a hill too steep to drive up. I think I'm gonna back up. I think I might be going into deeper water. <laughs> I'm kind of scared. Okay, so I should be driving towards the shore right now but it does not appear to be driving very much. Oh, wow, I'm looking straight up. I just saw the barge. Come on, go, 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 go. I don't think it's really going. I think I'm stuck on a little ledge right here. Maybe if I turn and go sideways. Yeah, I think the bottom is just way too rocky here. There's like cement slabs. Okay, now the barge is clearly starting to get pulled down. So, <laughs> uh-oh, that means it's more than six or seven feet deep right here. Now I think the barge is just picking it up, so it's just floating and not getting any traction. Yeah, it's just going deeper and deeper now. I'm screwed. I'm gonna have to go get it. I could just take the inflatable kayak out to get it, but that takes forever to inflate, so I'm gonna try this grappling hook. Yay, we got it. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna try it here instead because it looks like there's just gravel on the bottom for a little further out than there was over there. Over there, there's just a bunch of concrete chunks, so. Into the water we go. So I'm just gonna go forward until I, uh, until it looks like it drops off really fast or I find rocks that I can't drive over or something like that. So far, it's pretty shallow out there. It's probably 10, 15 feet offshore and it doesn't look like it's more than like three feet deep. This looks like it gets steep right here. Whoa, this is like a cliff right here. Okay, maybe not a cliff, but it definitely gets way deeper right there. And I do not want to go down that. So let me go back this way, up the hill. Oh wait, no, 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 I don't want to go down there. Oh no, 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 no. Wait, which way am I pointing? I need to go forward up the hill come on no no it's just falling down okay it just fell off a freaking cliff i think that's also so much further out i don't know if the grappling hook will go that far this time it'd be tough <laughs> i just got the grappling hook stuck on the top of the tupperware but 
I don't think that's gonna do us much good. I'm just kind of winching it now. As I drive, I'm pulling the cable a little bit, bit by bit. Feels like it's kind of coming. Come on, baby. Yeah. Yeah. A little more, a little more. Come on, a little more. Oh, I can feel it trying. A little more. Freaking grappling hook came off. Okay, I got it hooked again. Let's see if I can give it a tow. Drive forward. Yes. Gotta be sure to capture the progress. Drive forward. Yep, got it. Okay. A little more. Yep. Okay, now I gotta go up these rocks. Wow, these are big rocks. Damn. Okay, I might just have to pull with brute force. Come on. It's coming. Sort of. It's stuck on something down there. Yeah, now I'm just pulling it and it's just dragging upside down. <laughs> That's kind of gnarly, but oh well. Oh, no! Got it. Oh, came off. Oh, but I got the cable. Nice. Okay. You get back here, naughty snow cat. Oh no, my, my barge just tipped over. Amazing. Look at that. Still in one piece. So that's it for the AquaCat prototype version one. From these experiments, I learned a lot, including that this thing really needs a flat surface to drive on. The bottom of the lake would be perfect, but it's 40 feet deep. So if I ever revisit this project, I'll need to make it work with a much longer tether and to design it to handle higher pressures and maybe run ArduPilot sub as well. So here's some info on the new Snowcat kit. So the AquaCat has been disassembled and now I'm gonna talk a little bit about this new Snowcat design. So this is a prototype, so it's not completely representative of the final version that people will be able to build, but it's sort of similar. And there's also some modifications to this one made for the AquaCat, like these motor enclosures here. And I also had to cut away a lot more of the wood for these things to fit, so it's a little different. But anyways, I designed this thing to be cheaper and simpler than the full Snowcat kit. And that's because I didn't want to invest all the money and put all the time into ordering parts for a whole new uh, batch of the original Snowcats. There's only like 40 or 45 sets of tracks left, so this kit is pretty limited in volume. But basically, it just includes the bearings, bearings for the gearboxes, the shafts, motors, no ESCs, does not include those. It includes all the hardware and the tracks themselves, and the gears, uh, the pinion gear and the nylon gear. It does not include uh, two 3D printed gears that you have to print yourself. One other difference, the big difference from the original kit is this one has a three-stage gearbox. The original kit was a two-stage gearbox. So this one is going to be slower, but it's going to have more torque. But I'm also um, including the option for 800 kV motors with this one, whereas the highest kV that you could get with the original kit was 600 kV. So this one uh, will have faster spinning motors, should give quite a bit more power, a, a ton more torque with those 800 kV motors, but definitely uh, still less speed than the original kit. So since the volume is so much lower with this kit, I did not put as much time into designing it. I just kind of threw this together. I'm really hoping people kind of take this as like a base design and then kind of modify it and do whatever they want with it. But what I'm offering is at least a good starting point. So yeah, like I said before, there's no mid-track rollers on this version. There's just these skids and I kind of have these like 3D printed flexures here to Add a little bit of uh, springiness to it. Add a little bit of suspension. There's probably a lot of room for improvement here. It includes the same front axle spacers as the original kit. And this allows you to move the front axle forward and backward to tension the track properly. The chassis is all designed around a piece of wood. This can be made out of like seven millimeter plywood or quarter inch plywood or whatever you can get. And most people will probably have to cut this out with like a jigsaw or something. Um, I'm lucky enough to have a CNC router, so I cut the prototypes out on the CNC router. That makes it a lot easier, but yeah, just, just be aware that if you buy this kit and you don't have a CNC router, you're gonna have to cut out this piece of wood somehow. And it's not exactly like the simplest shape to cut out. And there's also plenty of holes you gotta drill in it. So this is just kind of a fair warning to people who might be interested in buying this that it's not like an all-inclusive kit. It's just kind of like a uh, minimalistic kit, I guess you could say. I just kind of put barely enough time into it to hopefully help move the rest of those uh, snowcat tracks. Also be aware that I'm not gonna make a nice instructional video for this version. So if you do buy it, then be aware that you're gonna have to just kind of go through this video and look at how things are assembled and look at the CAD model, and then maybe go back and watch the instructional video for the previous uh, snowcat kit 
and kind of see how the motor mounts are assembled and all that stuff, just if you need any tips. So buy it if you want, don't if you don't want to, but anyways, now I'm interested to peer inside these uh, gearboxes and these motor housings and see what they look like after being driven underwater for quite a while. Ugh, oh my god. There's a lot of stray... Oh, <laughs> oh that looks really nasty. There's a lot of stray marine grease in there. Oh. Ooh, that's pretty gross. Wow, so that marine grease just kind of went everywhere. <laughs> I'm not surprised, but that's pretty gross. There's a lot more sand that got in there than I thought. It wasn't sealed, but I did put some fabric over the little holes that I had made to let water flow in and out. But damn, there's some sand in there. That is, yeah, hmm, not so good. That would not have lasted very long. Wow, look at this. Sand got in this axle sleeve and just kind of ground little grooves into the aluminum. That's really interesting. I'm still not entirely sure if the uh, mineral oil in there is just super messed up or if there's a lot of water in it. My guess is that there's a lot of water in it because these things were not sealed very well. But the interesting thing is there's just as much air as there was at the start. So it's like it didn't completely fill up with water. It just kind of exchanged the fluids that that are in there. It does look like it's a slightly darker color. Like it looks like there's uh, sand in there, but I don't think there's sand. I think it's just maybe a little bit of rust. If water got in there, it could have could have rusted. Here we go. Oh! <laughs> it looks like there's some clumps of what look like different kinds of liquids. This one is. It seems like water. It smells like a baby. Because I was using baby oil with fragrance in it. Baby oil is mineral oil, for those of you who don't know. I'm sure these motors will be completely fine once I wash them off. I don't see any rust. So yeah, maybe don't convert your RC Test Flight Snowcat into an Aquacat. Or if you do, just don't do it this way. <laughs> but hey, we learned a lot. Fun stuff.